Hey YouTube, JP Dillon. Today we're going to go back a little bit in time. And here we have, I believe, what is it, either a 62 or a 63 Zenith 17 inch uh, metal tabletop, black and white. This is, of course, an all tube set. And I acquired this uh, at an estate sale. Saw it lurking in the corner and just, you know, the price is right. They were wanting to get rid of it for practically nothing, so. I took it upon myself to take it home with me. Uh, it's got some fancy features. Uh, the channel is projected into this window here. It has a sleep timer on it, which uh, the numbers have been rubbed off so I can't see how long you can sleep timer it for. And you've got your standard vertical hold brightness and contrast in that order, which is common for black and whites of the 60s from Zenith. All metal construction, it is very, very heavy. And uh, maybe it's a 15 inch. Well, it uses the 15K37 chassis. Uh, the VHF only does put it at uh, pre 64. And looks like it's a model K2127. Uh, so, I was told uh, by the daughter of the person that owned this, who was the estate liquidator, that the CRT was really tired and it had been pretty much in regular use since it was bought. And uh, I did test the CRT on it and it is a little tired. Cooking it at 8 volts for a while kind of woke it up a little bit. But I have not powered on the set. Uh, and I'll show you why here as soon as I tip it up on its side, which given its weight requires two hands. So it does need feet as the feet crumble and break off, like what's happened here. But really, you can see that it fell on something, and the grill is shorting out against the contrast pot here, and perhaps something else underneath here. So this, we need to remove this panel and straighten it, and just kind of take a brief look around and make sure that there's nothing that's going to, uh, to mess things up when we power it on. So it looks like it's just a couple of quarter inch hex nuts that are holding this bottom plate on. So let's take it off, straighten it, and then take a look underneath. So the bottom plate off, you can definitely see the impact there. Uh, take a look inside. This is why Zeniths are so well regarded. All point to point wiring. You've got a couple of uh, Explodomatic bumblebees here, which will I'll probably change out of. This set's worth worth the time. Uh, looks like somebody's replaced the horizontal phase detector diode. I don't think that's a stock part, not for something this old. Uh, then we've got a circuit breaker down here. We'll own that out just to make sure that's alive. No signs of death, no signs of peeing, electrolytic capacitors. And given what I've been told about this, this could have been those could have been changed. One of this has the, looks like this has the famous inner an integrator. No, that's in the horizontal circuit, so. I don't remember when Zena started using their vertical integrator things. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to pound this out, the rubber mallet, so turn down your volume. There's that. And just out of curiosity, let's ohm out this circuit breaker and see if it's alive. You can see all the little dust particles floating in the air. Yep, that's in pretty good shape. Uh, all right. So let's see if our power switch is good. We'll turn the little power switch thing here and let's ohm out our line cord. I can get it off the back here. Nice to give you a little holder thing that hasn't died yet. And I'm just going to uh, with the switch on, see if I'm reading something. I don't know if this is a transformer set or not. 
Could be a line operated set. Haven't even taken the back off yet. Alright, so we get 29 ohms. So the set's getting power. Cool. So that means that when I apply power to it, we should energize it. Uh, but before we do that, let me get some feet on this thing and we'll kind of clean all these pots and stuff, take off the back and take a look inside. I honestly even haven't had it apart yet other than to check the CRT. Uh, so yeah, let's do that next. Alright, so now we've got feet on here. I just found feet of the correct height. Uh, this one hasn't died yet, so uh, I had something to go by. We've uh, flattened out the metal thing. So what let's do is just uh, clean a couple of these pots here. I'm going to try to note their positions while I do that. This is kind of like little preliminary work that I like to do before powering something on just so that something weird like a, a crusty old pot doesn't confuse what I'm trying to do here. Come on. It's not aligned at all. Let's go from this side. Uh, sorry about that. I'm just going to go back and forth. Clean this one. Same with this one. Move that out of the way there. And then <clears throat> we got this here. A lot of these ones, like linearity isn't lined up vertical size and AGC isn't lined up and that famous bus control is wire wound usually don't use contact cleaner on those I don't know what this is there's no label for it and it's hidden so probably a horizontal size or centering I'm just going to note its position before I clean it okay it's all the way all the way up Let's clean our contrast pot, our brightness. And then our vertical hold. I don't like these knobs. The later ones that kind of stuck out a little bit more and had a nicer point to them. We're just going to put this stuff at about half away. And the vertical about three quarters of the way up. Zenas tend to want to roll slower than faster. Okay, so we got all the pots and stuff clean and prepped to turn it on. Let's take the back off and just take a quick look around. Alright, so getting this off, just a matter of moving the screws. Antennas are missing. Not like I'm going to use them for anything. Damn, there's a screw. Ugh. <clears throat> and then pull on the interlock. Nice and dusty. Yeah, somebody replaced that can. That's probably a 1970s part. There's your little Telecron sleep timer thing. And it is a transformer set, which is nice. It tells you it's a little bit better quality. So let's uh, 
let's dust the chassis out. I'm just going to use a natural bristle brush and clean things out. It's a dual speaker. Got one over there and one over there. Guarantee it's not stereo though. Trying to see. It's a 19 inch, not a 17. 19 CYP4. And it's got the older socket on it. Not the newer one with the tiny pins. So it definitely dates it and you've got a, a focus sleeve instead of a fixed voltage. Although, given that there's a wire that goes in there, there could be a sliding resistive element in there of some kind. And that still doesn't say what it does. Probably a width control. The famous uh, buzzomatic, as Shango likes to call it. Alright, let's clean it up and we'll note the difference. Alright, cleaned up, it looks a lot better. Chassis is not bad looking at all, no rust, nothing scary. And stupid me not seeing the giant sign that says horizontal width, which is pointing to that. It's kind of what I figured it was. So, <clears throat> based on what I've seen here, obviously someone's replaced that filter can. The damper tube has been changed. But otherwise, uh, these all look to be the original Xena tubes with the yellow brand on them. Not the later ones that were the red branded ones. Let's just pop open the high voltage cage here. See what our flyback looks like. Still uses like a 1B3 style though. Yeah, it doesn't look bad other than being a little bit dirty. I'm pretty sure that 1B3 is probably trash. Or is it a 1? That's a 1K3. 1K3. It's probably trash. <clears throat> it's usually the thing that goes bad first is the high voltage rectifier. But obviously the damper beat it to it. I may need two hands for this. Hold on a second. All right, well, I know about enough about this that I think that I can turn it on. And what I usually like to do with unknown sets, unless I really don't care about them at all, uh, is remove the top cap on the horizontal output so that can't conduct. Uh, and then <clears throat> just put it on a dim bulb tester and see what results we get. So it's time to hook that up and let's see what it actually does. All right, it's all hooked up. It's now or never. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, no power switch here. This is just your volume. The power switch is actually part of this sleep timer. So, light lights up, it's getting dimmer, that's good. It's starting to get a little brighter. It gets dimmer, a little brighter. No sound or anything though. I can hear something. I think it's the timer. Yep. See the timer moving? I think the bulb's limiting too much. It's not allowing the heaters to get bright enough to do anything. But it's not drawing excessive current. The bulb's actually pretty dimly lit. And one thing we can do to check the presence for B voltage is take our meter and measure the uh, top cap connector, not the horizontal output plate connector, but the top cap connector. Usually if you see boost there, you've got your B plus and everything, and that's running. So let's do that. All right, so if we come up to our top cap, we got 161 volts there. So this really is limiting it too much. It's not going to do much more. 
the tubes are just kind of dimly lit. I don't hear the vertical oscillator running. But also, at the same time, we put our hand on the main filter capacitors and things. Things are still nice and cold, so I don't think anything's drawing any excessive current. And I think it's safe to say we can take it off the bulb and see what it does now. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright, so here it is. No bulb. The horizontal output's hooked back up. Let's see what it does. Sound. Oh, look at that. Woo! Lost our high voltage. And then lost our power. <laughs> ah, something not right. Ugh. Cool. Well, we saw light there for a second. I'm thinking we had a horizontal output or a damper failure. The fact that we lost all horizontal sweep before the uh, breaker tripped. Let's see here. Does it go click? Yep, it does. Alright, so the breaker trip, we had a horizontal failure. Let's pull the tube out in the dampener and check it. Okay, so our horizontal output is a 6GV5, uh, which if we look up here, There it is. So it's plate 55, socket 21, UZ connector. Alright, so socket 21, UZ connector. Make sure that's nice and firmly planted in there. And it's dead dead. It's open. Let's just make sure I got this right here. 5521Z. Yep. Okay, so that horizontal output tube is just dead. Flat out open. Open element or something. It's very interesting for it to die like that. Usually they get weak or short, but this one just blew open. Alright, so I need a 6GB5. Let's check our 6AY3. Yeah, let's see what that is. Uh, there we go. So plate 14, socket 20. Okay. Lighten up. That's coming around. The damper's fine. Actually tests really good. So that horizontal output is trash. We didn't see any sort of strange horizontal problem. It just kind of went away, literally. And we lost our high voltage and everything. So I'm pretty sure I don't have one of these here at the shop. I might have one in my storage. I can go take a look real quick. But uh, we're going to have to stop and for now until I can find one of these things to get this uh, up and running again so we can take a look at it some more. Just flat out open. Let's go ahead and check one more time. I'm, just, I'm really kind of amazed that it just went open. Most of the time these die violently. So I'm kind of confused as to why it would have done that. Make sure I got a nice fat connection there. Yep, it's just open. Okay, well, it's off to find a replacement. I'm going to take a look around, but if not, uh, then we're going to have to put this on hold for a little bit. All right, well, taking a quick look around, it doesn't look like this is a particularly valuable tube. It's not expensive. They sell for around $10 no matter 
where you go. Uh, look on eBay. I like using uh, Jim Cross of Vacuum Tubes Incorporated as well. Uh, he's got it for a whopping 450 plus usually about 78 bucks for shipping, so again, about the same. Uh, I like buying from VTI because they test all their stuff. They place a warranty on all their stuff, so I know that I'm going to get something that works versus maybe saving $2 going through eBay only to find out that the tube is messed up or defective or uh, and then I gotta come back and do all this all over again so I might just spend the extra two bucks and get another one if I can't find one in my inventory at home but uh, yeah about ten dollars worth twelve dollars worth of a tube and very likely that thing will run again there wasn't any scary loud pop or anything the output tube just opened and it's weird that it would strip the breaker, but that could have just been in its death row. And it tried to draw a bunch of current and opened, and at the same time the breaker trip. Anyway, so as soon as I get my hands on one of these 6GV5s, we'll pop it in and we'll see uh, if we can make the set do anything else. Looks like it's got a usable high voltage rectifier, because the raster was pretty bright before it failed. It's got some vertical issues, but what old Zenith doesn't? So... That's where it stands. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching the uh, first episode. More stuff to come.